guys have access to your Dropbox, you can pull up your um, ISA call log just to follow along. Okay. So uh, with the ISA call log, this is really where it all begins. Um, this is this right here, this, this data uh, tab that says call log, you can see down here at the bottom. This is, this is where all of the data comes from to populate across the spreadsheet to be able to um, you know, run reports, to be able to look at data. Um, I built this whole call center up, up out of just one small office. And I used to always, I, I used to always you know, have a good pulse on you know, the energy level, um, just activities that was going on in the call center as I've done damn near everything for our business and just developed out to where we're at today. I just need solid numbers and solid uh, um, reports to look at to be able to know if somebody's slacking, not slacking, or if we need to work on you know, conversations to appointment ratios, maybe our data management um, is off and the lead that's managing the data um, just isn't focused on you know, continuously managing the data. Um, that is something we do every single morning, and you guys get to see Shelly do that on Monday. We just don't do that once a week. That's something data management is something we have to focus on daily in terms of keeping our ISAs in relevant conversations and off of old data. Uh, everybody says, you know, money's in the follow-up. I absolutely agree with that, but you need to be able to sift and sort and know who's worth following up with and who is not worth following up with because not all these in a follow-up is created equally. Um, so for, you know, for an example, you'll notice that we'll have multiple, uh, date entries in our call log because I want to track talk time, lead filters, all of that fun stuff. So, um, like we run, we run, you know, seven hour shifts. A lot of people ask, why don't your ISAs work eight hours, nine hours? It's because what I you know, highlighted last week is I want jam sessions with prospecting. So you come in, you get on the phone, and you jam for three hours straight. You go to, you go to lunch for an hour, and you jam for three hours straight again. But I am going to have downtime off the phone, whether it's processing pre-approval attempts. Maybe we're doing a quick training session. Maybe they're having a quick huddle. Um, you know, I will allow one smoke break in the evening or in the evening, in the morning, in the afternoon. Um, it, but maybe they're switching lead filters. And so I really want to know where the time is spent with dials, talk time, um, and, and each lead filter as well. So before lunch, they could have a couple of different data points in terms of um, the type of lead that they're calling. Um, and, and, you know, there's a good example, you know, right here with Barbara. Uh, with with commission zinc leads and and boomtown leads all on the same day just different uh, multiple logins start and stop times <clears throat> it's as simple as putting the dates in there uh, you guys can modify your fi uh, lead filters for us we're calling uh, you know boomtown leads uh, different buyer leads commissions ink buyer leads expired fisbo IVR live chat as we develop out with you guys this training live chat is going to be very important. Uh, I also touched on last week, you don't have to be good or great. You just have to have, to have somebody available. It's phenomenal that we squeeze uh, the amount of leads that we squeeze off live chat. Out of 10 appointments, I think it's roughly around 20 to 30 percent. Um, and if you're not, if you, if you don't have live chat available, you're missing out. The number one buyers, according to um, NAR, and if you, if you guys have access to keeping current matters and stuff like that, the millennials, are going to be the number one buyers this year, and the number one sellers are going to be boom, uh, uh, baby boomers. Um, so, so if you're a millennial, uh, you know I'm 33. I'm right there uh, at the top end of being a millennial. Uh, if you ask some of your rainmakers, they're probably like, I've called Adam 500 damn times and he never answers. But I will respond to Facebook messaging and I will respond to text. Um, because I can sift and sort and pick my conversations versus being caught off guard with a live phone call. I never answer my phone, really, um, unless I know exactly who it is. Now, um, you'll have a lot of people come to the website, ask a few questions. They'll realize, wow, it's a live person, and uh, we will teach you techniques and methods on 
how to give them information they want, but position yourself to get them on the phone to ultimately start the process in earning trust and starting a relationship. <clears throat> All right, so sign calls, Z buyers, just Z leads, whatever. Um, you know, we have Z sellers and buyers that tie into that. It's just Zillow leads. Um, so these are the lead filters that uh, are already set up in your guys' shit or um, uh, column there. And for the most part, most of you guys are already calling internet leads. If you're on like uh, conversion, real geek, something other than um, you know Boomtown or Commission Inc., you you can change these. I can show you how to do those. You, you un unhide line 45, one through 45. It'll be at the top of the spreadsheet. And you can you can modify it any way you want. Right now, your ISAs. Right now, your ISAs are um, ISA one, two, three, four, five. You also go to the top of the spreadsheet. You on on high line, you know, one through forty-five, and you can change the ISAs from one, two, three to an actual name. <clears throat> Some of the ISAs you see on this sheet are no longer with us, and there's actually a couple of ISAs that started in the last week that need to be added to this sheet, but they're not dialing yet. Uh, this sheet right here, I think we can go back, and we almost have like three and a half years worth of data, uh, and then the other two years are in another spreadsheet. Uh, you, you, you always, you, you never want to delete an ISA because you always want that data to compare year over year numbers. Um, and like for you know, for an example, Emily no longer works here. It'd be easy for me just to delete or take her out of the sheet, but then I couldn't. I delete all of her numbers as well. So keep that, keep keep all ISAs in there. <clears throat> it's pretty simple with time. Uh, this is where a lot of new ISAs make mistakes on the spreadsheet. Like um, you, you actually have to type type time in the way that it looks. Uh, you know, some ISAs will leave out a zero or um, just make an error, and it's just going to throw your whole month off, your week, the calculations. So you have to have a clean entry, uh, and somebody has to be watching this every single day. And as if you're a new ISA and they're expecting you to lead or grow and they're giving you responsibilities where somebody's not hovering over and watching over your shoulder, then that needs to be yourself and just take, you know, a few extra minutes and, and – uh, have pride in in your work. Uh, you know there you know there are some ISAs that get pretty excited and they're just always going to have data entry messes. And so then you need a team leader, uh, a team lead ISA, somebody that's talking the sheet every single day to make sure there's no errors and it's staying updated. <clears throat> it's automatically going to calculate your talk time, all right? And then you can put how many dials, your connections, wrong numbers, valid conversations. Uh, so there's a few of you that's even asked me or even followed me in the Inside Sales group, and they're like, what's the difference between a connection and a valid conversation? And for a new ISA, this is damn near the hardest thing for them to figure out and tracking to actually get a pure conversation to appointment conversion ratio. Now, every single connect is not going to be a valid conversation in terms of um, it's just not a valid lead. And if you're – uh, running a system like Sales Dialer, Mojo, um, Vulcan 7, whatever system. I know some of you guys have your own, built your own technology. Uh, and let's say you have 50 connects, right? Let's say 10 of those connects was wrong numbers. How many of those was a valid conversation with the correct name, a correct number, and was in the market to buy or sell a home? And I don't care if it's in five years, 10 years, or whatever, because then it's a data management issue. Like, if it's a clean lead, you can confirm a name, you can confirm a number, and they're saying, at some point in time, I will purchase a house or sell a house. It could be 10 years from now, or it could be 10 days from now. That's a valid conversation. It's just how you handle that lead, how you practice database management in terms of following back up with them, because you can drip on them, the email's good, and you can continuously call them if the timing's good because the number's correct, all right? Does anybody have any questions about a connect versus a valid conversation? Usually it takes like two to three weeks for every week. You know, this gets brought up once we're kicking off coaching. 
or even when we start doing our accountability calls once a month, we review numbers. Um, everybody on this call is not going to make it. I can, I can guarantee you that. Uh, we're going to have some ISAs get fired. <laughs> we're going to have some that just quit just because they're not going to be able to stretch themselves and really display the tenacity to grow as a person and to develop out um, in this position. And I hate to say it, but I've saw it hundreds of times. Um, with agents uh, and other businesses in our own uh, company and even in our in my call center and even with ISA beta group we kicked off with four months ago we're down to about 50% of the people that made it um, so the thing is we're really going to learn together think together create together you're going to become vulnerable in this group we'll have a lot of open discussion last week I spent time to tell you about myself tell you kind of about my struggles our struggles as a company to get to where we're at today where a lot of people respect our results but you have to respect the process and everything we went through to get to where we're at because I am going to challenge you I am going to push you I'm not here to I'm not here to make friends I'm here to help you get the desired results in your own personal career and for the actual company that uh, is paying Select Homes Coaching. And I, I promise you, if you stick to your guns and do exactly what you're supposed to do and stretch yourself, um, you're going to make some friends in this group role-playing. We're going to laugh together. We're going to cry together. Um, but um, <clears throat> I just... Uh, you know, just want to be honest with you. Pre-approval attempts are pretty simple on line K. You know, buyer appointments, if you set a buyer appointment, how many listing appointments uh, you had set in a day. And all of the gray area will automatically populate itself, okay? So you basically, you have almost 10 data points, 10 tr tracking metrics that is going to populate across the call log sheet. Pretty simple. Any questions? Tracy said, is there a data manual tracked throughout the day? Um, is the is the data manually tracked throughout the day? Uh, to answer your question, yes. Uh, I'm going to give you guys something you'll print and keep by your desk. Like, let's say you're on Mojo and you dial 200 dials before lunch. You spoke, maybe had 20 contacts. You scribble and scratch down that 10 of them was valid conversations, and you set one appointment, right? So, you, yes, the technology tracks it, but what the technology tracks isn't absolutely pure numbers and so that's why you're going to have to have a, 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 a sheet next to your keyboard keeping specifics because at the end of the day you could look at Vulcan 7 and see whatever they're telling you but how much of that is real live valid conversations off of those connects um, and, 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 and so on so the, the thing I'm looking for uh, is processing time. I'm looking for downtime. I'm looking for how much time is spent on each each filter, and I'm looking for a pure, valid conversation because I could have, you know, 50 connects with a lead source, whether it's Red X, um, even circle prospecting, whatever it may be. But if I only have two valid conversations, that's not going to net me a, a high ROI for the business and or the ISAs aren't going to make a lot of money. And so it helps me understand which data is good, which data isn't. And uh, I've, you know, we've burnt through a lot of different companies to come up with the list and the filters that we have. Um, you know, sign calls are pretty significant with us. We upload them every single day after the after the agents already talked to them. We have an agent on duty. It goes to the agent. We just do an export every single morning and run it back through the call center to spot check the agent, make sure they got all their information. And then more importantly, we're trying to squeeze them into our website just in case the agent didn't do it and articulate our unique selling propositions and what we can do from them from a company's perspective, not just the agent's perspective. And this is really as a role as a client care resource, uh, a center or an ISA, this is, this is where you have to step up to articulate that value and to bring it. Um, hopefully that answers your question. So yeah, you, your programs are obviously gonna track it and I don't get into features and benefits yeah, I don't work for Boomtown. I don't work for Commissions, Inc. I don't work for Red X, Vulcan 7. And a lot of people want me to show them how to run those functions and features. And you get to screen share with us and see exactly what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and then I'll kind of leave it up to you just to also apply yourself, learn, and do what's necessary. Um, and and um, it's, it's just uh, – 
it's best done through screen sharing uh, with us if you're already running those platforms. If you're not running the same platforms as us, I, I say spend as much uh, time in the Knowledge Center and watching videos and all that fun stuff if you're a new ISA. <clears throat> Stacy said, are your agents using the same tracking features? And if you're keeping track of that data as well through the same spreadsheet, I keep track I keep track of their stuff on a totally different spreadsheet. I don't micromanage uh, my agents um, um, like like you guys might uh, in terms of calls. Uh, so let's see here. Oh, this is my agents from last year. Um, I can use this. It don't matter. Normally, I don't even get into this until like a couple weeks out, and this is actually something we used a while back. I've told you guys I've coached with everybody. This is from Dirk Zeller's camp. Uh, we modified one for Select Homes Coaching similar to this. It's very simple. Um, it's just I, I want to know how many buyer appointments they had, you know, how many buyer agency agreements they got signed, how many they pended. In our column, though, I put, you know, how many they closed because I tracked all this on a different master tracker sheet, but this is something that I give, um, this, this is something that I give the agents, uh, and it's in their Dropbox, so they can track how much money they made, their conversion number. This guy's constantly converting at 4 to 5 6% before he was let go. Guy never made more than $40,000 in real estate. Uh, before he met me, been in the game seven, eight years, and then I had him making like thirty-two, thirty-four thousand dollars a quarter. The only problem is, is he had some uh, moral compass issues that uh, he had to leave our company. So uh, now, if they start falling behind, um, uh, Stacy, or their conversion number drops, because they know I do monthly uh, meetings with agents with that. Uh, if their not if their numbers start to fall behind, it's another sheet similar to, uh, let's see, this is it's similar to this sheet. <clears throat> uh, we got so much going on here. So um, I'm gonna you know, I give them their internet leads. Uh, offline, I want to know SOI, past client contacts, initial contacts, lead follow-ups, prospects created. It's a whole eight-week sheet, so I put them like in a two-month like boot camp again to get them ramp, uh, ramped up if they want to help or um, be held accountable. Uh, to a lot of people even here in the city say, you know, we're too rule heavy, we're independent brokerage, and this is where I told you we do extreme stuff to get extreme results. Uh, but you know, we want people that want to help themselves, and those are the people that we want to work with. Uh, you have to sell two homes a month to remain on our team and three homes a month to have an office. We pay for everything for you, phone, Internet, cars. You have no expenses with us, nothing besides your MLS fees and your gas and your car. So, uh, you know, for the most part, if they're struggling, uh, they'll track this stuff. Hopefully that answered your question. I know you're a rainmaker, not an ISA. Most people were like, and you can talk openly to the group, guys. Um, so you're a rainmaker. She's got other questions. Uh, they, they're having some turnover with some agents. This is the only reason I took a few minutes to answer those questions, or I said I would probably get into that um, a little later because uh, this stuff will seem like too much. Uh, but both of those sheets I have modified for us, and I can get those out to you, Stacy, if you need them. <clears throat> so we're, so, here, so here's we're going to go to the next tab at the bottom. It says team appointments last year. So real quick, I can look to see you know what we did last year, break it down per month. If I want to break it down per ISA, uh, I can break it down per ISA for, for the year. If I want to look at specific lead sources, because right now I'm just looking at uh, – I'm looking at right now we convert everything as a whole uh, from last year around 8%. This year we're around 12%. You know, I, I'm getting better people around me. Uh, we're developing out. A lot of people wanted me to start coaching last year. I just could not give up my time because I still was taking care of my own problems in my own backyard. Um, but uh, you, you you need to be able to break this down and break it down per ISA. You, we even can break it down per month. Um, you know, last month, this quarter, yesterday, today. Um, if the data is there, you're going to be able to populate it. Um, so 
you know, I, I'll pull this up. I'll go, what did we do yesterday? I'll cross-check it. Shelly's my team lead. You spend time with her on Mondays. I'll cross-check that board, and if we're off, I'm usually like, hey, have you looked at the spreadsheet today or what? Or if I know our call volume's down or something just don't make sense. It all comes from the sheet for me, and then she is managing the technology and the Boomtown and the Commissions Inc. and Red X and, and you, know, all, you know, all of the data points so I don't have to get in there and be caught in the weeds anymore. But as I'm on the fly and on the go, I can just look, look at these sheets and know if we're on track or not or if she needs to light a fire under some of their asses uh, and or um, we're just having some data management issues in the spreadsheet. <clears throat> Conversation to appointment ratio. This this is what I this is what I hawk right here. So every 12 and a half conversations that we're having in the call center, we're setting an appointment, and that's on all lead filters. And once again, I can break this down to how many expired, how many Fizbos, how many live chat people do we need to talk to, how many Boomtown uh, um, leads or Commissions Inc leads do we need to talk to, um, to to set an appointment. And this number right here is everything to me. Obviously, that the conversion number, you know, I don't compare that to what everybody else has going on, and I really don't want people to compare that uh, to us unless you're running a hybrid model. All, all of our data being ran in the call center is used data for the most part. A lot of people are like, these are fantastic numbers. You said 114, you know, a little over 1,100 appointments last year, but we sold 952 homes, and, and we really couldn't have done that. Uh, if we didn't have our agents prospecting, our buyer agents. So we got 25 buyer agents and they're prospecting. And I track their stuff on a different sheet. But, you know, we did supplement their business as a safety net and we set them 609 qualified appointments, right? <clears throat> and we, there, I don't track the closings on this sheet because I know some of you guys have an ISA operating as a, an ISA and then the contract to close person or the TC person, we have those split up. And I know from uh, my, my transaction coordination sheet with the buyer appointments that's already pre-approved before, you know, they're running out in the field and showing them a house or doing a buyer consultation in office, we're going to close about 80% of those. She said, what's the difference between N and O? Okay. So N is, uh, in is just how many how many valid conversations do I need to have to set an appointment? She said, never mind. Hopefully I explained it. Okay. Uh, and then you see the percent, and then off the percent, that's what's set. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody got questions on this tab? And go to this year. Let's compare this year real quick to last year. We're kicking ass this year. Volume-wise, over 83,000. Um, conversion numbers dropped, came down. Conversation to appointment ratio has went up. I've brought on a lot of new agents that are hungry and they're prospecting. So I'd probably say that extra 1% bump has really came from um, having having the agents doing their job. And if the agents are doing their job, then uh, we're paying just hourly rates for customer service or the safety net. Uh, we're not paying on a lot of commission uh, to our ISAs. Uh, our ISAs, I want them making money, but we always can add new lead filters. We always can add new lead sources. Uh, right now, I currently have some more listing data that I could add into our business. I just had some turnover with some listing agents, and we're developing some other listing agents from the buyer side of the business to that side. I just don't have the warm bodies to take the data, so I can't even um, add that data yet. So um, the ISAs will always have work regardless of how we squeeze it out with the agents or them. Total appointments we've set this year is 783 qualified appointments. I don't know if I touched on this. Every 2.64 hours in the call center, we're setting an appointment. You know, so we're open from you know 8 o'clock in the morning till 9 o'clock at night, and so you know every every two and a half, almost you know a little over two and a half hours, we're setting an appointment. <clears throat> One 
let's just look at last month because when we break down our monthly stuff, this is uh, what we're going to be looking at um, this, this month. Let's look at last month. So last month we dialed right over 10,000 dials, had, you know, 1,564 15, valid conversations. Pre-approval attempts are down because the listing agents or I mean the buyer agents are doing their job. Uh, buyer appointments we set 49 as well. So uh, the other you know the other people didn't get pre-approved with our lender. They didn't go throughout the process uh, so that we confirmed with their lender or they was able to get their pre-approval to us uh, to set the buyer appointment. Listing appointments 87. Last over the last couple of years, uh, that number's really changed. We was real heavy on the buyer appointments and buyer leads, and uh, we run a 55-45 percent business. And what I mean by that, out of the 952 homes closed, 55 percent of our business was buyer business, and another 45 percent was listing business. So I love to keep growing uh, the listings. Uh, business and list, listing appointments, 136 appointments total. So, pretty pretty simple stuff, guys. <clears throat> I'm gonna kick this back. Any questions so far? If you want to break it down per ISA, you can do that as well from that tab. <clears throat> If you don't want to mess with the filters, you can just burn through real quick. Look at this year. I just showed you that. Um, same features are on this tab as well. It's pretty simple stuff. <clears throat> Team appointments last week. Last week numbers. Set 19 appointments. This week we're already at 20. Normally we're at you know the high 27, 30s. We have a couple new people that started, so. We're just having downtime, uh, getting them up and trained. Uh, even my lead ISA, you know, she prospects, even though she handles data management, has other responsibilities, sits on the management squad with us, um, she's still prospecting. Really, I want to take a quick snapshot of where we're at this week. So I told you we're at 20 appointments. So I'm looking at the board right now across the call center. If some of you guys saw uh, my screen from earlier. Uh, it only says 17 because they've set some stuff today that isn't uh, been added into the spreadsheet. <clears throat> All right. So if this is where, if you want to really get into the specifics, you can break it down per ISA, per date, uh, per lead source. You know, Barbara each month, Dale. Um, so. If I figure, if I if I feel like as a group we're struggling and the lead ISA she just doesn't understand where the struggle is at, whether it's uh, with with database management and or I'm just not getting the call volume that I should be uh, getting from an ISA, uh, then I can go in here and really break this down and justify it and make it logical instead of emotional. So, <clears throat> good stuff. Okay. So this is a number side of things. So Sarah said, which tends to make more rain, buyer agents versus listing agents, or does that depend on the market? Really depends on the market, I guess. Uh, just a few years ago, we was in a seller's market, and our seller business beat out our buyer's business, and then we made a shift to a buyer's market. Now our buyer business outweighs our listing business. Uh, Gerbic had built a listing business before I joined five years ago. He was selling 350 homes year after year. It was all listing stuff. We just had three buyer agents that was just a byproduct to the business, and him and a, another gentleman was just hustling out in the out in the field with listings. And then I, you know, er, and the other three listing agents was just sitting around staring at the phone for it to ring from sign call. And I'm like, as a marketer, I'm like, wow, there can be a better way. And then that's when we started adding you know, internet leads and just developing to where we're at today five years later. So um, just depends on your market. And then what's your ROI that you can net off your different lead sources. So any questions so far for this, guys? This is the master tracker. 
or this is the call log. This is where the number is going to come from. This is going to how you're going to track your sources, track the ISAs, track talk time, valid conversations to appointment ratio. It's all simple stuff, right? Here, I'll unmute you guys. You guys got to unmute yourself if you got questions. Anybody? Questions? Anybody? You guys are you guys are still shy. All right, let's let's move on to the master tracker. You guys got it figured out. All right, it's gonna look a lot different on your guys' end since it's blank. It, it really doesn't start to come to life until the actual data is entered in through the call log tab. <clears throat> okay, so. That happens um, multiple times uh, a shift where they don't do it. All, they're just not in the spreadsheet adding stuff. So they'll mark they'll mark stuff on the paper, and then they'll make one input before they go to lunch, and then they'll make one input before they go uh, home for the evening because I don't want them, you know, um, piddling around in a spreadsheet, and I don't want them, you know, I don't want a lot of downtime. You, you need to maximize talk time and being on the phone. Uh, this is where their money is going to be made, and this is how the company is going to grow to be able to give more raises, pay more benefits, pay you know pay more commission, all that fun stuff. <clears throat> now, after after appointment is set, we do usually typically go into this sheet immediately because this is where the commission is paid from. We enter the date the appointment was set, the date the appointment is supposed to occur, the the agent that it's going to occur with, and once again. You guys will be able to customize this how you wish, all right? <clears throat> is that, and then I want to know, is it a listing appointment or a buyer's appointment? I want to I want to know the lead's name. I want to know the address if it's a listing agent or a listing appointment. I want to know what the telephone number is. I want to know which ISA set it. Now, confirm just means that, like, we see it. We have a lot of blanks right here. It's because... Um, These appointments haven't occurred yet. So, you know, once we go up, start getting up here, uh, it's a bunch of yeses or nos. We maybe still have some blanks just simply because the agent hasn't relayed that information back to us. Confirmed means, yes, the appointment happened, and I, I pay 50 bucks on that appointment. If it's a no, that means there was a no-show or it was rescheduled, okay? And then, you know, if it uh, was a yes, then we'll pay a commission on it. And Shelly controls this tab right here where we fill out our commission once a week. Um, and, and, and then we submit that to our own account and we'll pay off that. So uh, the paid and confirmed column are important. Any questions from the master tracker? All of the data that populates across this sheet that you guys have access to um, all comes from this data this this data tab right here. Do, do you guys, why don't you pay on a rescheduled? Because I only pay if I can get a qualified uh, buyer or a qualified listing appointment in front of a buyer or a listing agent. Like, but I I don't pay a percent tied to closings or any of that. And as our group evolves, and if you guys are doing things the right way, I told you you guys are going to run into growing pains. You're going to run into problems. And you're going to point fingers. Agents are going to say you're setting crap quality and it's taking too long to get you up and running. And there's going to be other agents that um, um, that, that um, your livelihood is now tied to their skill set. And you might say that was a good appointment. It took me eight months to follow up with that person, nine, you know, 90 days to follow up with that person, and then you gave it to the agent and they just blew it. And you're like, if I was on the field, I could have converted that. And so – if you're a small team and there's a and there is a a, a real close connection and belief system uh, and trust, then it can work. But we're running multiple locations. Half our agents don't even know half our ISAs. We're just opening two offices in Kansas City, and so we can't tie our income to each other's outcome. Um, so I have I have parameters that, that are that are set for the ISAs to play within, and with what we call a qualified appointment. And still, we have a 30%, you know, quality issue that we have to manage with no shows. Maybe they lied on their pre-approval; they weren't truthful. Um, you know, maybe we, you know, got the agent to gamble or whatever. But for the most part, you know, 70, 75% show up confirm ratio is pretty good. Most of the rest of the country can't get 40 to 50%, um, and we can get into the psychology of that stuff later. 
Stacy said, I don't see the master tracker in dot loop file. You mean Dropbox? You're just uh, you're just sucked into all of the um, you know Zillow buying uh, dot loop talk on Facebook, right? <laughs> Uh, all right, let's go here. Let's find Derek. All right, you guys are right. I need to drop the master tracker in there. Some of the other stuff in this file. Um, will be stuff that we'll be covering in the next couple of weeks and we'll continuously drop drop stuff in your Dropbox um, and communicate that way. So your call logs in there, that's what this one is, and then I just need to go in there and add a, the master tracker to all of your guys' stuff because I copy and paste for all of, all of you, the new people. <clears throat> I used to track the finance, the finance uh, if it was in-house with us or not in-house. Um, culturally, as our business has grown, people are like, I don't want to use your lender. Maybe he didn't build rapport with him. Yeah, you know, maybe he was cherry picking business. You know, we went for like from three buyer agents to 25 buyer agents. Um, you know, we went from two listing agents to you know six or seven. So, um, you know, but if we can get them pre-approved with our in-house lender. Give you know you know give them a pre-qualified person. They'll typically use that person, uh, even though we do have co-marketing dollars and agreements with our in-house lenders. You know, state law is we can't steer people, um, but also it's a culture issue. If I don't have agents, ISAs, and everybody on the same page, they're probably not going to last too long. And I used to track it. I used to care about it until I just I gave up on it. And so that's why that tab's in there. Uh, you can delete it, take it out, um, whatever you like to do with it. So. <clears throat> I want to also figure out where my leads are going with my agents, and you can come up here and filter agents, who has what. You know, right now we got Greg Farha pulled up, so we can we can track all the appointments that he's been set. Uh, set. Um, you know, we also can filter it by date. You know, last year, this month, yesterday. Uh, whatever. Uh, also, you can track statuses. Uh, you know, I'd be willing for some feedback uh, from this as well. Um, but uh, you guys can modify and change these um, to really fit your guys' needs. These pivot tables are, are uh, you can customize them. I ended up listening with Keller Williams instead. We really don't, we really don't use these notes on the master tracker too much. Um, we just haven't really found it a benefit as we're keeping everything in like the um, the systems with commissions, Inc., Boomtown, all that stuff. Uh, but I really want to figure out, you know, you know, where the actual name of the lead is and which agent I can tag it through that. Also, I can come here, uh, search. Uh, whoops. <clears throat> also, I can come here, uh, search by ISA, date, lead, appointment, agent, if it's a buyer, a listing appointment, if it was confirmed, not confirmed, status, blank. Um, really, since we're not tying it to closings, um, A, B, and C, if it's dead, active, whatever it may be, I uh, – uh, I, I was going to track it to the to the closing table, uh, but we track it on another sheet on the T, in the TC department that's not an ISA sheet. Um, so it, the status for us really doesn't matter, but the status for you might, um, you know, might make sense if you're being paid a commission uh, at closing or whatever it may be. This tab will help. <clears throat> if you want to, if you want to, you know, look and see where. The data is going. Uh, the first couple tabs are actually to tag names with names because the call log sheet is just a number sheet. And the actual uh, master tracker is to track names, track client names, addresses, uh, and tag it with an agent. <clears throat> okay. 
So, you know, let's say I got an agent telling me that they're not getting a bunch of appointments from the call center. I can come here and say, well, that's kind of bullshit because you've got 95 appointments from us and you've took, you know, the most amount of appointments in whatever time frame that you want to look at. You can put, yes, these are confirmed appointments. You can look at, you know, no's, was no show, see what they was totally set versus what showed up. You can look still what's blank, and when I see blanks in our tracker, it means that it hasn't occurred yet. I hate seeing blanks because it's misleading information, but um, the easiest way to get the data back from if the appointment was confirmed or not confirmed is through our Google calendars, and I'll show you guys that here in a few minutes. Okay. You can come here, look at last week, break down the months. You want to be specific with days, you can even do that. Um, so you can see where your, your appointments are at. This is a little cleaner version, just collapse everything. <clears throat> Once again, r right here, you can pick by date. I'm working with my operations manager guy. Uh, I noticed we, we changed these sheets uh, a few months ago. Uh, I want I want you guys to be able to pick dates, um, just like on the other pivot tables yesterday, today. You can look at listing appointments, buyer appointments, uh, all that fun stuff. Okay. Same with this sheet right here. You can look at confirm, not confirm. Look at ISAs, um, what they're setting, where they're at year to date. Um, what's being confirmed, what isn't confirmed. Once again, that same pivot table isn't populating over here. Uh, so it might take me, it's not that one, whoops. Sorry, date. So right here, it's not populating the part, uh, the top where you could do yesterday, today, monthly, and that's a problem because this screen right here is also, uh, I can take this tab, tie it back into the uh, call log, how I had it, or I can leave it here because um, I just retweaked this stuff about six months ago, uh, and I'm open to changes, but I need this other tab up here. I really didn't realize it until um, Shelly brought it to my attention. So, Because I want to know what's being set, what's, what's uh, actually confirming out, um, and then I can really go back to the TC um, uh, sheet in terms of our closings, look at agents' pipelines, because I sit down with agents every month. I can say you set four buyer appointments, you know, six in the last, you know, three months, you know, where are we at in terms of the pipeline, and I help track that in the pipeline to get it to the TC department, to get it to, um, to get it to them. So, <clears throat> I've damn near been talking since 12 o'clock this afternoon. It's 3 o'clock. I've been talking for three hours straight, guys. Uh, I'm going to grab some water real quick. And uh, I'm going to open this up for questions, but this is going to be essential to the building blocks and the foundation of you building out an ISA department and running a mathematical business within this real estate company that you work for. Um, and you're going to be able to hold the uh, rainmakers accountable for having good data, bad data, or you got to be held accountable to improve a skill set um, in terms of quality, conversation to appointment ratio, uh, all the fun stuff that we're going to get into in the coming months together. So I'm going to unmute you guys while I grab some water, take any questions you guys have. <clears throat> okay. 